Welcome back. At 915, we are continuing to talk about the tragedy in Texas. And tragedy is always a difficult topic. Never mind talking to kids about it. This morning, Dr. Laura Saunders, child psychologist at the Institute of Living, is joining me right now via Zoom. Dr. Saunders, thanks for being with us. Good morning, Erica. Sorry to be with you under such difficult circumstances. Yeah, it certainly is a difficult morning for so many of us. Now, whether conversations were started last night or maybe they're more likely going to be happening today, what should a family discussion look like when it comes to this tragedy? There's so many questions that our kids have. Well, I think oftentimes in situations like this, the way that they obtain the information mm -hmm. kind of really directs how this will go. I mean, as you've announced, there's a bunch of schools that are enacting different security measures. So now kids are like, well, why are there more security guards or why are we practicing right. the lockdown drill again? So and that creates a lot of fear and uncertainty. So, you know, those questions need to be addressed. Um, you know, older kids, teens might see something on social media. And, you know, what's also unfortunate is that this is becoming regular and I don't want people to become in any way hardened to it because these are tragedies and these are absolutely devastating tragedies in, in these communities, as we know here in Connecticut after Sandy Hook. Well, what are the key things that we need to tell them? Because a lot of what we're gonna be saying is, we don't know because the questions are, why did this happen? We don't know. Will this happen again? We don't know. We don't know the answer. So what do we know for certainty that we can tell them to help them feel better? So, you know, we can answer, I can answer direct questions about the here and now. I cannot, none of us can, and I certainly cannot predict the future, right? So, you know, why did this happen? Clearly someone was very disturbed. They got access to, to guns when they shouldn't have access to guns. Um, and they did something very unsafe with them, right? I mean, for younger kids, you use very simple language. For older kids, you, you, you try to engage it as more of a discussion, like, well, why do you think someone would do this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, have you seen, do you see postings on social media and other places where people are angry? So sometimes I like to sort of open it up a little bit and, and create it as a dialogue, not just me as the parent giving information. Mm -hmm. um, get at some of their fears or some of their concerns because that's really what's at the root of this for us as parents. What if we as parents, if we have a child who is really feeling scared, who's really starting to feel anxious. They're sort of having concerns about going to school. What do we do then? So there's a difference between providing assurance and providing promises. So we can't promise anything, right? <clears throat> assurance is we will do our best at home to keep you safe. At school, we believe that our school officials do their best to keep the building safe. It's why you practice fire drills. It's why you practice lockdown drills. Mm -hmm. We do these things to keep you safe. We have to just hope that the, the things that we're putting in place will keep you safe. And while there are no guarantees, it is very hard to carry that anxiety each day. Um, you know, so the more we can do is provide assurance, but not promises. Mm -hmm. Assurance indeed. All right. Dr. Saunders, a lot of difficult conversations that many of us will be having. Thank you for your help. Hopefully it'll be a little less difficult now that we've talked to you and got some great advice.